What is up, everyone? Welcome to L2R2 PlayStation Podcast. My name is Fonzie. I'm joined by my co-host, Indie Game Dev, and my UK bro from another mum, Cal Monroe. Cal, how are you? Yep, uh, good. Feeling very aerodynamic and fast. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, it should be a good one. <laughs> you have to oil up your body too, so you can just move faster. Yeah. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like I could just sort of like glide through the air, sort of the wind just. You know, that passing by my head. That reminds me when I was a kid uh, and my family still gives me shit for it to this day, but I would tell my mom to like look behind me as I'm running because like I, I could, I swear that there'd be like flames behind me. I was running so fast. So I was like, hey mom, look behind me. There's, there's, am I leaving like, you know, smoke trails or something? And she's like, yeah, yeah. Huh? you're doing good. Yeah, like you're, you're, that's just because you're like worried about the environment, weren't you? You didn't want to like cause Yeah, you know, or anything. it's like, hey, get a fire extinguisher yeah. handy because I'm, I'm going to be blasting through. <laughs> 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 nice well how you been uh yeah good yeah i've just been um busy i was up seeing my sister um over the week and yeah just yeah just getting back to being busy and yeah yeah not 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 a lot to be honest how about you uh nothing crazy yeah we just got uh, i was telling you a new dog yesterday and so we're getting her used to the new place and we got a bunch of uh dog stuff ready and we already got her like you know used to like uh uh going bathroom outside and so it's uh yeah. it's so so far it's smooth and she's like taken yeah. to us really well and so it's really cool and everybody right. loves her yeah very exciting it's very exciting yeah so now i'm gonna be getting a little stroller pushing her around and then one of those little like baby <laughs> carriage things in the front yeah yeah i can i think that'll suit you actually <laughs> yeah i'll just go to the the playground and just have my little dog with me um yeah. But yeah, beyond that, and then like, you know, some crazy PC troubles, I was trying to troubleshoot with you over the week, yeah. but uh, getting that hopefully back up and running, but playing a lot of VR, like the, the Oculus Quest, and oh, yeah, just, nice. yeah. just getting super into it, I was playing um, this yeah. newer game called, it's called like Box VR on PS PSVR, because it's on there too, but they had mm. this update, now it's yeah. called Fit VR, but it's this boxing VR game, and it's very much like like uh, beat saber where you're kind of you're punching to the beat uppercuts and and certain jabs and stuff and then ducking too yeah. so you're it's basically like uh you're you're squatting you're 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 dodging you're punching it's it's a pretty uh yeah. intense workout like it quickly becomes yeah, nice. uh, taxing but it's, it's really fun yeah yeah awesome yeah i think it's um it's i don't think a lot of people sort of realize how good for exercise they they could be especially for like people who just sit inside and play games all the time they're, they're right great kind of thing. um because yeah, i i i was just saying i saw my sister and she's got an oculus quest as well and i was playing a game called um bullet whip or pistol whip or something oh I, that's that's um, next on my list yeah 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 and that, that's really good fun i definitely recommend that and that, but yeah again like you just get so knackered just from like trying to dodge out the way of bullets and like and i found myself like proper squatting like like so close to the ground just because like there'd be like three guys all firing bullets at me so i have to like somehow <laughs> duck under them all and, um yeah there's definitely uh, a sweat on that you can get on a lot of those games do you have to stop yourself from like head kicking then like just relying on your on your training <laughs> yeah i need controllers for my feet <laughs> <laughs> that's what i was thinking like yeah maybe they can make some kind of ufc experience but you have to incorporate the feet which i don't see a lot of vr units yeah even try but no no, I don't know how that would work because, I mean, they, they they can sort of pick up your hands now without controllers, can't they? So maybe there's something, but I suppose you'd have to, like, kick into view kind of thing. So That's a thing, yeah, like the Oculus some, has like, the... Off screen, yeah. Right, because, yeah, the Oculus has these cameras that will track your hands, but you really have to be almost looking down because the cameras are, mm -hmm. they're all around the unit, but they're really on the bottom to see your hand. So, it, yeah. yeah, unless yeah. you're kicking high up every time or you put, yeah. there's got to be, like, simple stuff you can put on your feet. I know the there's that one thing yeah. for Switch that like is a band that you can put around your your thigh or something so there's there's okay. technology out there yeah, yeah 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 just get like a full mocap suit like with the bau baubles on and everything and uh, yeah i'm, I'm almost uh, curious to <laughs> to purchase something like yeah. that because they look they look quite comfy to be fair you wear them to bed i reckon they got like the soft balls <laughs> on them and right you don't even need a bed you could just lay on the ground because of the soft yeah, uh, yeah. stuff yeah but yeah playing yeah. that and then also on beat saber they uh released this uh uh lincoln park pack i don't know if you ever listened to lincoln park but they are celebrating like their 20th which makes you feel old but it's like 20 years since their first album so they're putting out a bunch of yeah. stuff and also the songs are on beat saber so i'm just like rocking out to that and feel like i'm back in middle school and yeah it's awesome yeah yeah, yeah you gotta love sort of that their old school stuff's great and it? it's just nice nostalgia and 
Right. Yeah, no, the other newer awesome. stuff, they kept uh, they kept pumping out albums like too fast. I think there was just like a bunch yeah. of them, and there'd be just it's hard to like keep keep track with it, isn't it? Yeah, and they kind of um, I'm not saying like lost their way, but like there's just I think they're just doing too much, and like just hey, take a break, yeah. take four years, and then put out an album. You know, get the best ones yeah. in there. But yeah, yeah, no, I definitely love them, um, like Meteora and Hybrid Theory, and oh, yep. they're definitely the their best ones. Oh yeah, and the Beat yeah, Secret Pack has that. It doesn't matter what song. I think they're all like good songs. Like, I'm I'm one of those people that just if if a song sounds fine, I'll like it. I'm not like you know some people are like really real purists. Like oh, it's not it's not heavy enough or it's not this enough. And I just <laughs> I just like a song if it sounds good, then I like it or whatever. But <laughs> yeah, are you a big music guy? Where do you uh, do you have any stuff you're listening to lately? Um, yeah, I, like it's going to sound really cliche, but I do genuinely like love like my Spotify is just full of like just the weirdest concoctions of different <laughs> genres and things but, um, no i really love like kg elephant i don't know if you've had them. yep they're cool oh um, yeah um and uh at the moment i've been listening to a lot of the darkness i know you had they're a british band a british oh, i remember them yeah band. yeah because uh, they were really local to where i grew up um so they were kind of like local heroes to 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 me nice um and uh yeah they're because we have a festival every year here called download festival which is a big uh, rock festival I've heard um, of this one, yeah. Yeah, um, and obviously that didn't happen this year or whatever, but next year they've already announced their lineup just to try and get people excited for it. And yeah, the darkness of that, so I think I'm going to go just to... Um, I might bring like a flag for like the place I used to live in and see if they, <laughs> see if they spot it. But um, but yeah, no, I, I literally just... Um, yeah, I, I think... Yeah, I'm listening to a lot of the darkness at the moment just because I think similar to like what you're saying about Linkin Park, like they brought out a lot of albums i just didn't i didn't really get around to listening to so i'm sort of i like to use things like festivals or gigs to like as a reason to catch up on like some bands like backlogs but um but I've, i'm a bit weird like if i listen to a band i want to like listen i want to know all their songs so like i'll like try and listen to all their albums and i like to like listen to how the albums change as well like as they get as they go on i always find that quite interesting but yeah, yeah, like all sorts. What, what, what sort of music? I, I, I saw one when you were doing art once. You were listening to some pretty um, heavy stuff. Uh, I forget what I was listening to, but yeah, I've done that. Which I realized later on that I guess Twitch is pretty extreme with like with uh, copyrighted yeah, stuff oh, yeah. now, so they'll just shut you down. But I didn't realize that, and so I was kind of you know running <laughs> yeah, illegally. How can you but... break a law? How can you break a law you don't know exists? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. I tell the cops every time. <laughs> But yeah. Uh, yeah, like, uh, yeah. I forget what I was listening to. Like, I'm a big, uh, there's this band called The Deftones. I'm a big fan of them. Yeah, Most likely oh, yeah. I was listening to them. They just put out a new single the other day, too. Um, yeah. But uh, I notice a lot of bands, like, uh, and I'll follow them on Twitter, and they'll say, uh, especially this other band called AFI, they have their album done, but they're waiting to see when's the best time to release it. Because normally the schedule would be, you know, put out the album, you go tour, but you can't do that. So they're trying to figure out. Do we just go all digital? You know, do we wait and then tour in the stuff? Yeah. Will people be sick of, sick yeah. of these songs by that time? I'm not sure how yeah. you do it, but it is weird. Yeah, I think Deftones are at download as well next year, so I'll um, I'll, nice. I'll take a video of them for you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like woo. I put on my on my VR unit, and there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised more uh, concerts don't do that. There was a a rapper by the name of Childish Gambino. I remember he did a VR thing where they put up like a, a special camera that has like just the, the the sensors on each side and every side like 360, yeah. and you're basically in the crowd watching it. Um, but I just don't mm-hmm. see a lot of people do that. You know what? There's this other band called Under Oath, and they actually did a stream concert, and so you could, you pay tickets to actually watch it, and it was like ten bucks a ticket. Mm-hmm. You get to watch a stream, yeah. and so it's like you're watching a concert. And they actually did a full production. There's the lights and the stage, mm-hmm. and it's all this like 360 camera stuff. And that was really rad. Yeah. But um, surprise, more yeah. bands don't try and kind of fill this time with yeah. something they can sell because right now they can't do anything. Well, even before lockdown, I, I always thought VR needs to be more in like events, so like live things, so like sport, and uh, it'd be really good. And um, and yeah, music would be awesome. And um yeah I don't, I don't know why it's not more of it especially now i'm surprised not right. more people are doing it but yeah i know um a friend of mine watched um i think it was a band called dream theater he's really into and they did a live oh yeah i've heard of that um and he did they did like a live stream or or a live gig online which he he sort of watched so um yeah i think that could be that could be quite nice for like sort of introverted people as well who want to sort of experience it live but don't want to go and be around people and right um, there was actually something. <laughs> 
my, my brother's a big WWE fan and I was around his last night and he had it on and um, they've just like taken over this new place where, which they're going to be using for whilst they can't have an audience and the, the audience is literally just screens oh, and really? then it's like people watching like on a webcam and it's Whoa. really it looked really strange but, but the cool <laughs> thing was it's because it's all like purpose built for them it's like they can do all these amazing like light shows and um stuff like that so it looks really high production but yeah when when all like the fans are there it looks really like i don't know it looks really trippy and weird it's just <laughs> a bunch of screens of like people's faces staring at staring at you so um but yeah hopefully soon we'll see some vr um events and things because i'd love to sort of watch something live that i don't have to actually physically go to because that, that takes all the effort bit out of it <laughs> yeah i always wish and me and my wife talk about this like as i get older i wish i could just teleport into the venue and then teleport right out it's like i don't want to do it any of the yeah. parking the yeah. the line yeah. to the bathroom it's like but i love going to concerts it's just i hate people so it's just it's yeah. just this battle in my brain but uh yeah you mentioned with the screens thing it's very much like we're quickly gone into like black mirror territory where it, just yeah, in a matter exactly. of months we have this as maybe yeah. that's the norm for a lot of stuff but yeah i guess yeah, you gotta do what you gotta black do mirror you know what? Uh, there is. We used to have a drive-through in our town, which like closed down years ago. Is the drive-through is that a, a staple in the UK? Is that something that you'll find, or is that also kind of dead? What like a like a drive-through like, cinema? Or, yes, or, yes. Uh, like yeah, um, yeah. That, that's uh, actually that uh, I got some friends going to one tonight. Um, oh really? And I was yeah, I was considering going, but it's quite expensive to take your car, and it's like it's like thirty pounds to bring your car or whatever. And I was just like, I can't really be bothered to and it's uh, the lost boys which is on which is a great film but um yeah i've, I've seen it before and i don't really want to spend 30 pounds to, to watch <laughs> yeah, it but, um, to watch this old movie. Uh, yeah but yeah no, yeah we've got some of them around here i've just never been to them before um but yeah that's another thing that i suppose is probably going to get bigger now isn't it as well because uh i mean that's you can't really get more socially distant than sitting in your car and watching a film and right i saw on the website like they play the movie audio through your radio or something Gotcha. Yeah, I know it's that's like, how they um, nowadays, like the newer ones will just, yeah, they just broadcast yeah. you, you tune it to the right station and then you hear the audio. Yeah, which is like really weird because I don't even know, like, I only use my Bluetooth in my car for like my phone. So I have no idea how to even tune. I, or I've got like <laughs> digital radio as well. So like it's all just done for you. So I'd have no idea what I was doing. I'd be like pressing loads of buttons and <laughs> I'll just watch it when, and just sort of ask if they can put subtitles on or something. <laughs> right. You're the one guy. Uh, yeah, no, I was saying like we talked about that too. And, uh, yeah, it's like, I don't never, I never use my radio for anything. It's like, I just hook up my phone to it. So yeah. I guess I'll be trying to fiddle with that. But, um, yeah, I mean, anything yeah. they can do. Cause like, no, I think across the board, I feel like movie theaters in general are kind of, people are just not going as much as staying at home and watching. So anything they can do to kind of bring people back, you, I'm surprised they're not just trying to quickly build, yeah. you know, rudimentary stuff that they can like take down if they need to. But uh, at least in the United States, like this stuff ain't going away anytime soon. So take the time and build uh, a drive-in movie theater. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I, I, th I think we've had a few um, around here. Cause I think they're very, they're a very American, like eighties or even earlier than eighties, isn't it? It's probably sure. more like sixties, sixties, seventies. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, and I think in the UK we're, we're kind of like, Oh, that's cool. Like, that's a cool <laughs> outside thing. So I think we've got quite a few around us. And I think even before, lockdown we had a few as well but it's, yeah, it's just never something i've really thought about doing but i think because of the current situation you know our, our cinemas are open now i think but i'm still not comfortable in going to them because that's a bit too close for comfort but right um yeah driving cinema now would be perfect but yeah not you know i i, I wouldn't have minded if i'd gone in someone else's car or something and you know split the but but for me to just drive up on my own and spend 30 quid to watch a film is just um yeah it's not it's uh it's, it's it's sort of my scottish in me not wanting to break the <laughs> bank or anything <laughs> that's why you gotta just uh drive uber so you drive up there and you're already making money you know just uh, charging yeah. per per seat there you go uh, yeah. there, there's some uh, comedians in the united states that are doing these tours that are drive-through uh comedy tours like people uh they I, they're they're using like these empty lots you drive up and then they have a stage but everyone stays in their cars and they do comedy that way so i've heard of uh, a couple of tours that are that are doing that and it's an interesting idea but they kind of have to innovate and try something because there's there's no way yeah. to have people meet up you know and it's, it's going to be a while too so got to figure something out yeah yeah it's going to be a, a long old time i think 
Yeah. And you mentioned even in, in your guys' uh, area, it's getting better, but you still have people there. It's like, I don't necessarily want to still you know, rub elbows at someone. I want to kind of wait this out away for vaccine. So even if we do start, the numbers start dropping, I think we're still going to have people wait a while to feel comfortable yeah. and rightfully so. So it's going to be a while before we get back to any kind of normal. We had tickets for this uh, band, My Chemical Romance. Uh, they were like doing this reunion tour thing, but only in stadiums. They announced that like right before covid and mm-hmm. like stadiums got have to be the last thing that goes back to normal. Yeah. Cause that's what yeah. thousands of people in one area. I mean, that's a Petri dish. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's weird over here. Cause it's sort of, we're kind of like stagnating and then going up and again, and then going up and it's, so, I mean, I think we're all t- trying, even the advert, like the commercials on tel on the television are sort of talking about, you know, getting back out there and, you know, trying to like live normally again. So it's definitely the sort of narrative, but there is still that underlying, like, you know, we got to be careful. We don't want to right. have a second spike. And and I think, you know, I'm I'm sort of trying to live a bit normally again. I mean, work's still very hit and miss, like very much. I work from home most of the time. And But in terms of like socializing, I'm still going out. I've been going to like pubs and things recently. And um, But I think you just have to sort of draw the line somewhere. You just have to think of everything logically and just right. be careful. But um it's fairly safe at the moment just because of how i think it's something like um one in eighteen thousand people or something might have it or, or something it's, it's very very small odds um at the moment so gotcha. um, you, you can't i think when the odds are that small you sort of can't just let yourself get too worked up about it and let yourself sort of suffer from it so i'm trying to return to the money but yeah things like cinemas and things are just too because they're just they're, they're quite manky anyway they're quite yeah uh, that's one thing we're all realizing it's like oh we're living a super gross life for the past couple of yeah, years yeah, like, yeah. no it's one sanitized anything uh, everyone's going to be like super like uh sanitary freaks now um which yeah. probably isn't a bad thing but, uh, right we need some of that yeah because we're getting too used <laughs> yeah. to living like cavemen but yeah exactly <laughs> did you get to play any games over the week um it's been one of those weeks where i'm sort of like dipped in and out of a few things um i I've, well, I've actually started i've sort of kind of got this like writing gig for a company doing game reviews it's like a tech company oh nice um, and they're looking for someone to start doing um get or to help them with their game reviews um and it's unpaid but i'll but i get to like keep the games i review so like i'll i'll so i'll get keys for games because they're quite a big uh website it seems and you know i get like keys for games that are coming out so i get them early i get to keep them which is quite cool that's um, awesome. But yeah, I'm doing, uh, so I've been playing Pathfinder Kingmaker, which has actually just come out on PS4 and Xbox. Um, okay. Like the definitive edition of it. Um, so I've been doing that, which it's actually a game I played when it originally came out a couple of years ago. I um, mean, it's kind of like a party based old school RPG, kind of like, you know, Baldur's Gate and Pillars of Eternity and all that. Um, uh, so yeah, so I've been playing that, I've been enjoying that, um, playing it with the controller because it's that's one of the new things with the updated version. Um, and that's been oh, that's been pleasantly uh, surprising. Um, I never thought I'd play a game like that with a controller, but they've like overhauled everything, like the HUD and everything, so that it works really well. Um, so yeah, that's been that's been good fun. Um, but yeah, other than that, not nothing really. Um, I played a little bit of Dead Cells on PlayStation Now because I didn't realize it was on PlayStation Now. Oh, nice. Because um, uh, that's a game I've been meaning to try out for a while, and that that seems like a lot of fun as well. So yeah, so I've just been sort of like testing the waters for some games um ready to sort of uh uh jump it oh actually there was a game i played what was it uh what watam watam what what have you heard of that that sounds familiar what uh, is it uh, um, if you can describe it i'll look up footage of it too i don't actually know if, if i can even describe it it's so weird it's made by the guys who did that i am katamari oh that is that where you're like uh are you food or you're trying to like eat stuff or poop stuff i forget what yeah, you that, do yeah. that, like, that, <laughs> that is right but like that yeah it's it's the weirdest experience i've ever had i was playing it with my little niece because she really likes it um it's like you know when you were like watch like i don't know if you ever seen like you know like baby tv like yeah they have these weird like nonsensical cartoons it's like that but a game and it was just <laughs> really really strange um so yeah, so just yeah, I've just been playing some bits and pieces, um, uh, but not 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 too much. How about you? Um, yeah, just the PSVR, uh, the Oculus uh, yeah. VR stuff, yeah. really. Uh, while yeah, my PC's out, 
Yeah, just staying fit, you know, just getting my workouts in. And um, yeah, that Watam, I do want to play that. I keep forgetting about it because I love Katamari and uh, just yeah. that world. It's so cute and, and just weird and it's very Japanese. And I just like, I want to live in that world. But um, yeah, that's on my list. Yeah, the, yeah it's, it's very, very strange if you play it. I, I actually thought it was um, when, when I first when I first sort of started playing it, I I thought it was like made in dreams because it was really similar like style to dreams. But mm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I wasn't a big fan. It was too weird. It was too... There's not really a point to it. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and, like, it runs really badly as well. Like, oh, it's really? It's a really simple-looking game. Right. Um, yes, yeah, so like, as soon as the camera points up to the skybox, it just, like, drops frames really badly. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't the best experience I've had, but I'm kind of glad I did experience it just because it is uh, quite um, strange. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you think it would run well because it's just like simple textures and stuff. Yeah, Maybe right, there's just yeah. so much under the hood or it's not optimized or whatever the hell's going on. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, unless, I mean, I played it for about an hour or two. So unless like after a certain amount of time, it opens up to this huge like thing and it was all sort of hidden underneath. But um, <laughs> I don't think so. It was a uh, yeah, very, very strange, horrible game. The kind of game you'd like have a nightmare about and then you'd be able to like explain it when you woke up. <laughs> right that's actually good they should put that on the box that's a good description of what's going on um uh yeah i'm trying to think of anything else like i really my my go-to now is to jump into fall, fall guys i've yet to win an actual match but um still playing it and it. having fun i don't know man because it's like it's all randomized the levels and so you kind of have to luck out and there's some where the the fruit is is they're like throwing huge fruit at you and you're on a conveyor belt and I have no way of winning that one. So I always know if that's towards the end, I'm not going to win. Yeah. And there's another one where it's uh, you have to grab someone's tail and hold on to it for the longest amount of time. And someone yeah. always grabs my tail off of me right at the last second. And I just snap my controller in half. Like I've never felt so much rage. <laughs> yeah, it sounds, uh, it sounds very irritating. I still haven't um, given it a go. I need to add it to my library so that I've got it just in case, but. Yeah, you I gotta try it's, it. Uh, I just can't. I just can't do multiplayer anymore, just because I get so angry, like knowing that that's an actual real person who's like got the better of me. I don't <laughs> mind if it's like AI, but yeah, I don't like. Uh, I get too competitive um, in multiplayer games. I just can't do it. And and I think just like now, the kids who were too young to play the multiplayer games back when I played them, now they're sort of old enough to play them. They're right. so much better than I am. So right. <laughs> like um it's almost like there was all these untapped like abilities that like none no people my age knew about and then there's all these <laughs> kids that sort of like started like clawing the controller and mm -hmm. doing all these weird things that gives them advantage but yeah you'd think that uh almost like a boxer like having new generations you know try and come up and challenge them and, and standing the test of time like you think we'd be better by dealing with this younger yeah. generations coming in but yeah, I think yeah. I just I just stopped playing because I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to be challenged yeah. by them. Yeah. But you think if you held yeah. on and kept playing, then I guess you'd be better than all of them. Yeah, I think I think vet is the right word. I think I think if I'm a multiplayer veteran, you know, there I, you go. I'm I'm too old. I'm retired. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm washed up. <laughs> You're getting your 30% discount at the store, and then that's about it. Yeah, I'm living <laughs> off my uh, COD four pension now. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that they had, uh, they're doing their full blown like teases now and like announcements for the next one. And I saw that you gave no shits about that. So that was pretty funny to see. <laughs> yeah, I, I, just, I just really can't anymore. Like, <laughs> there's just, it's just like, I just can't believe they haven't even like taken a year out yet. Like, just, oh, it's just, I mean, it's, it feels like Modern Warfare is still so new, especially with how big like Warzone, yeah, Warzone. is. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, I just can't, I just can't anymore. But the art looks cool. But, yeah. yeah it's just when you do it you know when you're releasing one year at a time or one year like one year from the last one it's like you can't really innovate enough i understand they they piggyback and they use different studios but it's like it's still kind of the same uh it's, it's, gameplay same formula yeah it's not so much even that it's like it's not it's i, I don't think of it as much like oh they don't have enough time or they're rushing it it's more just like I just see it so often. I just don't care. Like, there's just no hype ever. Because, right. Like you, as soon as you buy the new Call of Duty, you know in 12 months time there's going to be another one, and it just every time. And it's like, whereas like you know you got Battlefield 4, which had like years of um, support with DLC, and the community just stayed the entire time. And you know when you buy like a Battlefield game, I mean maybe not 
so much recently, but you know that you've got a decent multiplayer game that's going to see you through the next like two or three years. Yeah. Um, and then also, like when you get to that second year or so, you're looking ahead to the next one. I've never looked ahead to the next Call of Duty because <laughs> by the time you know, I I'm either bored of it really quickly, so I already don't care what's coming, or by the time you're like, you, like, even if you're having a really good fun, it might be like two months away from the new one. So it's just, just yeah, just just give it some time. Just let them sit, and they can even get microtransactions from it if they so wish. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess that's all why I was always more interested in the single player because that's where it seems like mm. it's something that's different. There's a story, there's a a narrative, but um. Yeah, the multiplayer is usually just rinse, repeat, use the same thing. I guess it's yeah. slightly different now with Warzone. It's kind of a different changeup, but it's still mm. you're doing the same kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, I'll see what they announce, but um, am I going to yeah. get it day one? I highly doubt it, but yeah. they do often trick me into it, though. Like, I think Warzone, yeah. I was there day one. The last Call of Duty, I was there very, yeah. very close to launch, and they find a way to, like, whatever beta or, or demo that comes out, I'm just like, ah, okay, I'm jumping yeah. in. <laughs> they got me. yeah. Yeah, I can't. I can't promise that on day one I'm not going to be really excited and buy it because that's what I did with Modern Warfare. <laughs> um, but that that yeah. again was mostly for the single player, um, and I really didn't like the multiplayer on on Modern Warfare. But um, I don't know. It it depends what happens really. If if there's a new Battlefield announced, then I'll be even more so. Like I don't care, especially if it's you know what what we think it is with the Battlefield Four um, sort of rumors, but um right yeah i just i'm just not sure anymore i just I, it's just uh noise now really call of duty is yeah yeah i'm i'm more excited for like a new uh because I'm, I'm i'm still in fps mode like but i want something new something from a different developer like uh we talk about bringing back kill zones like i want mm -hmm. something else it's just kind of tailored to be its own like campaign experience i want something yeah. like that yeah. um soon so that's what i'm more in the mood for yeah Nice, Callum. So, yeah, we'll go into some of the articles here. We got uh, some lined up. This first one is about Deathloop. So we got uh, PS5 console exclusive Deathloop has been delayed to Q2 2021. This is Liam Croft, uh, yeah, Liam Croft of PushSquare.com. Well, that's one less PlayStation 5 launch game to look forward to. Arcane Lion has made the understandably difficult decision to delay Deathloop to quarter two 2021, meaning it will miss the launch of Sony's next-gen console by a considerable a number of months. The team states that it will share another update on the game soon, but the delay is, a, is an essential one as the world continues to battle the coronavirus pandemic and working from home. In a statement to Twitter, the developer said, our ambition for Deathloop is to deliver a signature arc in game that takes you to never, never before seen places in a stylish new world. At the same time, the health and safety of, of everyone at Arcane, Leon or Lion, remains at our top priority. As we've adjusted to working from home, we found delivering this new and exciting experience at the polish and quality level that defines both an arcane game and a true next-gen experience is taking longer than normal. Um, how'd you feel about this? I didn't realize this was going to be a launch game, and I, I was excited for this game. Mm -hmm. But I guess you know it's a bummer that it's been uh, they have to they have to push it, but also understandable. Yeah, yeah. I thought I, th I didn't know it was launch. I thought it. I I assumed it was like Q1 2021 or something. Um, but yeah, no, it's a shame. It's I mean, it makes sense with. COVID and everything. I think we're going to see a huge amount of delays still to come. Um, so yeah, it's, I think Deathloop looks great as well. I think it's important that they, you know, make sure it's how they need it to be. And um, yeah, I'm really, really excited to play Deathloop. Actually, it sounds, um, it, well, it looks, it looks really, really good. Yeah, and I love Arcane Games. I'm a huge fan of Dishonored, and I need to play through the actual Prey game again. I think I started at the beginning and never finished it, but mm -hmm. I love how they let you move through the world and just doing it from everything first person. This one seems to lie more on the gunplay, which is cool. Yeah, and so it's a bummer, but I didn't realize it was going to be. It wasn't going to be a launch game. So maybe if they didn't say anything, I don't know if anybody would have noticed, and they just mm -hmm. kind of could could have kept trucking along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's quite weird. I, I don't remember it ever, like I because I'm because sure, even when we watched the thing where they showed gameplay of it last, I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it would have been like quite a big thing for it to be a launch game. So right. I mean, maybe it just went over our heads. But um, but yeah, I mean the Q, Q2 2021. It's a it's a good way away. But I think we'll it, it'll just build more and more hype for it. Because as much as I'm really excited for it, I don't think it is has that like massive generated hype for it yet. Um, so perhaps. Yeah coming out i mean if we're saying the ps5 is maybe november december time maybe that is a bit was a bit early for it considering the amount of hype it has so this just gives it time to build up more um of an audience and yeah it gives them time to polish it and 
bring it to the quality they need. Yeah, I agree. I guess with this one out of the way, what does the PS5 launch lineup look like? So we have Miles Morales is going to be a launch game. Mm-hmm. And beyond that, um, I mean, Ratchet, kind of blank. Ratchet and, and Clank, is, it? is that a launch? I want to say that's that's a launch. Um, so we got that one down. I know there's you know third party stuff for sure. There's a Assassin's, Assassin's Creed, Creed got, yeah. Um, and then Cyberpunk will be already launched by that by that time. Yeah. Um, whether there's like the the next gen update by then or not, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Beyond that, it's it's uh, not a whole lot of excuses. Unless hopefully, like them, but... hopefully that's when Bat- the new Battlefield will come into play as well. Um, cause I mean, they've already said that they, there's lots they haven't even announced yet that will be launching with the PS5. Um, so hopefully there's, um, yeah, you know, a lot, a lot more to, to see, but for me, I think Miles Morales and Ratchet and Clank, they're, they're two strong, they're very oh, yeah. strong games and they're both Insomniac, which is kind of, kind of strange, but, so they're, um, uh, but impressive at the, the same time. There. Yeah. Yeah. They need, a. well, I was about to say they need like a pay rise, but I think Sony only recently gave them like billions of dollars, didn't they? So um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they 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 should they should work hard. <laughs> as long as they have a Fall Guys there with the next gen update, then I think we're we're good. <laughs> yeah. <for> PS Five. <laughs> so yeah, we'll move on. Let's see, we got the next one here. Is uh, Sony working on next generation VR headset, but it might not be PSVR. This is Joe Scrabble's of IGN. Sony is developing a next generation VR headset, but it may. Well, not be related to PlayStation VR, a job listing spotted by Upload VR explains that Sony is hiring a team to create a next generation VR head mounted display. However, this device is being developed with a view to five years from now. And the listing has been posted by the core Sony Corporation rather than Sony Interactive Entertainment, which created the original PSVR headset. While a PSVR 2 has yet to be confirmed, we've seen uh, Sony working on touch-sensitive controllers, and we know that PS5 will continue to support the original PSVR model, so it seems likely that PlayStation will continue its association with VR. However, it's entirely possible that the core Sony Corporation is working on VR to different ends alongside SIE's work on PSVR, and the five-year timeline for this particular headset seems to point to an, a next generation of VR itself rather than the console gaming. Uh, yeah, I saw this uh, this uh, this news come up, and um, I guess I'm just thinking, what is the plan for PSVR two? Do they really mm. hold off quite a quite a ways? Or I know I know we're expecting them to not have anything this year, I imagine. But like, what is the plan for PSVR two? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would have thought we would have at least heard something by now. Um, I, I genuinely thought that when the PS five was announced, it would there would have been something along with it um but maybe not i mean i, I don't know it sounds it all sounds very um complicated um you know with the different listings and the the, the uh a view to five years from now kind of thing um because that's uh there certainly needs to be something between now and five years uh to, right by five years from now that. like there's going to be other stuff on the market that's going to blow yeah. it, our psvr already has kind of str- or bare bottle or bare um bare bones you know uh features yeah. so yeah mm-hmm. you want to kind of make a future proof but i guess what would they innovate on with psvr2 i think just easier easier to more accessible to use just less of a faff um i think uh better controllers i think something better than the move controllers um obviously much much better resolutions needed um i think the psvr 720p i want to say um Mm. and uh obviously higher just performance in general um, I think yeah, I think it just needs t- a lot of tidying, um, especially with things like the Quest out now. Um, it needs a huge amount of tidying, it need- and yeah, it just needs to be a lot more high quality. It needs to take advantage of that powerful machine. Um, so yeah, I think I think a, a second iteration is definitely needed because the first PlayStation VR was very much it's kind of like a ghetto version of VR, isn't it? Like to just so that they could sort of sell it right. for the price they could. Um, you know, with all these cables everywhere. So, yeah, I'm excited to see something a bit neater, a bit nicer, a bit more appetizing. Um, uh, so, yeah, so hopefully, I mean, it might be that they're sort of trying to wait it out. They might know that there's going to be like a a slow period next year um, or, or maybe even just after the PS5 comes out if the launch library is not that good. So they might be just holding off on an announcement to, you know, wait till they need to generate some more hype because they seem to be quite good at doing that. Um but yeah, yeah, no, uh, uh, hopefully we'll see something soon. 
Yeah, it seems like with PSVR, the uh, the Vita kind of had to die for PSVR to yeah. take over that development space. And it's yeah. almost like they just kind of reconfigured whatever screens they had on the Vitas and just kind of said, hey, we can use this for a PSVR mm-hmm. and, and duct tape a you know, headset to it. But yeah, if they could innovate, uh, the cords are a problem. I've always read the issues with the, the way the cords are set up. There's that little box that does a lot of yeah. the processing as well. Do you think with yeah. the PS5, would it be powerful enough where you can just have it wireless or plug it in directly to the PS5 and maybe that could get rid of that middleman processor unit? Yeah, I don't know. I think, I, I don't know whether that processing box is like, obviously it's there because the PlayStation 4 is probably not quite powerful enough to on its own output what it needs. But I mean, does the Pro still need it? Do you still need the box for the Pro? I'm not sure if that process... So. I'm not sure if that processor box is like just needed. It's like a a piece of that VR that it, that makes it work or something. Because it, it's more like a, it seems to be more like a splitter in a way that sort of like splits something off. Um, so I'm oh, I'm not sure. Gotcha. If, I'm not sure about that. But um, yeah, I think the main thing is just the cables. There's so many of them. They're so thick. Even like just 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 looking in a bubble of like where you're sat with it i mean you've got this cable that sort of runs around and comes down there and it's massive as well really big and yep um yeah it could definitely do some tidying up um but yeah i i I love the psvr i think it's a great headset even now where where it looks even more outdated than before with the newer headsets out now Uh, i think it's a great piece of kit and i think it's a great great priced as well um uh, but yeah, there definitely needs to be a new iteration for the PS5, for sure. And I would argue PSVR has helped VR in general because it's made mm-hmm. it maybe the most approachable way to jump into VR. I guess yeah. now with Oculus Quest, that's the most recent st- uh, standalone headset where you don't need anything. You just have right. the unit and that's it. You download games straight to it. But before mm-hmm. that, it's like you needed a PC, you needed yeah. uh, you know Oculus uh, Rift, all these other ones, HTC. So if you, yeah. this was a great way to get people. They already have a PS4. They spend another yeah. four hundred bucks, three hundred bucks, and they got the, mm-hmm. you know, they have VR. So but yeah. yeah, now times have changed. They need to, uh, you know, innovate. I'm sure that's what they're working on because I think they don't normally just abandon stuff with the uh, exception of uh, Vita. They don't normally yeah. abandon stuff too quickly. No. And so I think unless they had plans to like bring some other kind of mobile thing back to life. Yeah. Then I would say, okay, well, they're going to switch gears to something else. Yeah. But it seems like and because Vita's dead, now it's PSVR the whole way. And they abandoned the Vita the day it came out as well, whereas they've actually like supported the PlayStation VR. Um, right. So yeah. So yeah. You'd hope. Yeah. You hopefully they're um, they're, they're going to do something. They're going to invest into it. Um, it definitely makes sense to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I think like even. See... Go ahead. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, I mean, it's a tangent, but I would like to see Xbox you know, at least not, they don't have to develop their own thing, but at least let mm-hmm. it be compatible with, with uh, series X. If it's going to be this crazy powerhouse of technology, mm-hmm. let me plug in my, my Oculus quest, whatever device I have yeah, and, you know, play VR games through Microsoft store or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a really, a really good um, idea for Microsoft to get in on that. I mean, they've got their HoloLens, which is something I haven't heard about in ages, but that technology is like insane. Like, it, right. Uh, I, I saw a presentation of it once at some indie dev conference and they were saying then that these are the things that will eventually replace mobile phones because um, that they're, they're just, they can do everything a mobile phone does, but just, and so much more. And they use wear them on your face. They're just like glasses. And even now like the development uh, versions of them look like something like from the future. Um, so Microsoft mm-hmm. have definitely got their sort of fingers in um, at least mixed reality um so i'm surprised that they haven't you know sort of tried piggybacking on that but they might be waiting for the best opportunity to do so um because i mean they've got all this hololens tech and they might just be waiting before really um pushing for that because they've got a lot of other things i think that microsoft need to straighten out i don't think they have any room to experiment at the moment um because they need to make sure that they've got games uh first and foremost um right but yeah but yeah it is it, it, i i i'd be very surprised if in say 4 or 5 years time microsoft didn't have uh, vr games on their platform as well yeah i'm surprised they don't and they don't even have to develop their own tech they can just make sure it's compatible with stuff and that's kind of the way they've gone where rather than focus on their own stuff they're just making sure that you can play their games wherever you know on pc on xbox yeah. so it also makes sense for vr units you have your own it works and it's just in their ecosystem and it it's compatible so and i would i would imagine that microsoft maybe has deeper pockets in sony too so they could 
spend the time and, and maybe more money developing stuff, but they've just been around, I uh, mean, I can't say longer than, than Sony, but I feel like they're just maybe more successful with, with all their products, with all the PC stuff. But yeah. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just talking on my ass, but I feel like they would have a bit more money <laughs> than, uh, than Sony. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll see. That's uh, PSVR news. Really, uh, we're gonna wait to see what they what they are working on. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they're working on something behind the scenes. But uh, this one was uh, this next article was kind of surprise dropped as Sony does, and it was a cool feature. So this is a Ghost of Tsushima Legends, a free online co-op mode arriving in fall 2020. This is Adam Bankers of IGN. Ghost of Tsushima Legends, a free online co-op mode, will be available to owners of the PS4 exclusive in fall 2020. Legends is a new experience and doesn't feature Jin Sakai or his companions, but instead focuses on four warriors who have been built up as legends and stories told by the people of Tsushima. While Ghost of Tsushima's single-player campaign focuses on open world and exploring the natural beauty of the island, the new co-op mode is haunting and fantastical with locations and enemies inspired by Japanese folktales and mythology, and an emphasis on cooperation, combat, and action. Legends will exclusively will be exclusively co-op, and it can be played with friends or via online matchmaking in groups of two to four players. There will also be four different classes, the Samurai, Hunter, Ronin, or Assassin, and each one will have unique advantages and abilities that will be revealed in the future. Ghost of Tsushima Legends will be free to players who own the PS4 exclusive, and developers have confirmed to IGN it will not feature any microtransactions of any kind. What did you think of this news? It was pretty cool to see this drop uh, randomly on, like, Tuesday. Yeah, I, I think it's absolutely awesome. I didn't, I, I didn't see it coming at all. Um, I, I'm really intrigued as to how it will work. I, I, I like how it's sort of completely separate as well. Um, yeah, I'm really, really excited to see see how that how that goes. Um, I'm not sure if I have sort of anyone to play it with. So I probably have to use normal matchmaking. But um, yeah, no, it'll be it'll be awesome. Hopefully, there'll be some new trophies to get as well because uh, you know I did get the platinum trophy, so. <laughs> not to brag but <laughs> not to brag but no no no, no it's, it's it's really cool i i um i think it's awesome that it's free to everybody and it sounds like it's really exploring a completely different part of the game as well so yeah that's a really really cool um addition and also with covid i mean i imagine that you know that they're, they're having to work from home and everything so it's awesome that they've able to pull this off um you know so quickly and so easily yeah, no, this one is nuts. I mean, I don't think anyone expected it. Oftentimes, stuff will leak. You know, there's like rumblings in the in that whole industry, but I haven't heard any people talk about this online. Uh, Jason Schreier wasn't, you know, uh, spilling the mm-hmm. beans or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, this is great. I'm surprised that it's free. I mean, you could kind of, you could, if not charge separately for this, you mm-hmm. could do some kind of microtransaction that's that's easily just like, you know, customizable uh, stuff on your on your body, you know, just like uh, just features like that. They don't affect the gameplay, yeah. but the fact that they're just going, hey, it's all free. Mm-hmm. They just want to get you in there. Uh, that's great. This is really building this as just a stronger, you know, exclusive and and new new thing for for Sony to just lean into. This is another get for yeah. PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. And and yeah, I think like you're saying with the microtransactions and and not having to charge, I think that's just all down to obviously Ghost of Shima did awesomely in sales and also as we were saying earlier playstation recently gave insomniac billions and billions of dollars and they probably got their like financial support anyway so um so yeah so they don't really they they probably don't have that many people to have to please and investors and all this kind of stuff so um, they can just do what the what the players want and it's only going to make people more and more enticed with playstation as a brand enticed with ghost shishima and um, yeah, it's a really, really good move, and yeah, I can't wait to play. I like how they're uh, going into that like mystical, more fantastical stuff as well. Because the when that was in go- the normal Ghost of Shima game, um, I think those bits were really cool as well. So it'd be nice to explore sort of that a lot more. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, what a great uh, uh, entry point with using the the legends of folklore. I feel like uh, mm-hmm. some of the recent Assassin's Creeds. Uh, did that where there would be like these um, I remember seeing trailers for it because I know one of the what Odyssey you can go into Atlantis somehow so they're like mm. they do lean into the mythology and let these like yeah. these separate uh, missions that where you can do that so I like that they're also leaning into that with Tsushima yeah yeah definitely nice Callum so you mentioned uh, this is a kind of a good uh, good feature for players and they're kind of uh, they don't have any reason to 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 you know leave a bad taste in people's mouth but let's jump forward to this next one this is a the way not to do it i guess this is 505 games attempts to explain controls ps5 upgrade scandal 
So Sammy Barker of PushSquare.com has the article. Control Publisher 505 Games caused controversy last week when it revealed that only players of the third-person shooter's new Ultimate Edition will be able to upgrade to the PlayStation 5 version for free. If you own the original, regardless of whether you have the season pass or not, you'll be bang out of luck. Following a heavy backlash, the organization's attempt to explain its decision, quote, the upgrade path that we are offering is only possible when upgrading from the same version of the game. A statement reads, as we are only doing additional development on Control Ultimate Edition on the next-gen platforms, we are unfortunately unable to offer an upgrade path to all existing Control players. We understand how this might upset a number of players, but you'll still be able to play the 2019 edition of Control and each expansion on the new platforms. The publisher points out that the original version will still be playable on PS5 using backwards compatibility, but obviously it won't benefit from any of the upgrades that are being implemented as part of the Ultimate Edition. The problem for 505 Games is that no matter how it tries to explain the decision, it ultimately boils down to, we want more money, and while we appreciate the fact that Developer Remedy is investigating or investing additional work to enhance the experience for PS5, the reality is that other companies are offering free PS4 to PS5 upgrades, irrespective of which version of the game you own. Um, yeah, this was, uh, not more, you know, not a better, uh, reaction. Like we thought maybe they could kind of change gears, but they have no, they've made it worse. (laughs) Yeah, It's like literally all they've said is, oh, you could, well, the reason is, is because we're only upgrading ultimate edition. Like that's literally that what they said, like we, we're only doing development on control ultimate edition. Like just, just do it to like, do it the other way around, do it, do the standard edition. And then also upgrade all the stuff the Ultimate Edition has, and then you can have both. It's just, um, it's just stupid. Yeah, they they're, mentioned. They're... Uh, I think further in that article, they talk about how they have two SKUs now because they have the standard and the Ultimate, mm. and they were kind of explaining that as being an issue why they can't upgrade it. But it's all bullshit. I mean, this is yeah. uh, especially if it's backwards compatible uh, compatible on PS5. There's got to be something where you can unlock and just like tweak features. Mm-hmm just like on a PC version of the game, you know, where yeah. you can just kind of like upgrade the the shaders and textures and they're just choosing basically. And they're showing now revealing that they're choosing to not let people do that as some kind of yeah. uh, incentive to buy this, this ultimate edition, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I've just seen actually on, I, I don't know if you've seen, um, we've had a, a, a question. Um, oh, gotcha. saying, I was checking the chat, but I, I looked away yeah. for a second. Uh, uh, it says, I'm going to have to buy a remastered version of God of War and Last of Us 2 to be able to play it on PS5. Um, and I think the answer <laughs> is you're going to have to buy the ultimate edition of both and then you'll right. be able to play them on PS5. <laughs> <laughs> and then you send a voucher, a $20 voucher to Sony, yeah. and then they decide. Yeah. yeah. No, I think I think, no, too, I think Last of Us 2 and God of War will definitely be backwards compatible, won't they? They'll be at least backwards compatible. I imagine right. Last of Us 2 will probably even upgrade because of how new it is. Um, but yeah, I, I can't imagine you have to buy another version, um, unless they, unless Santa Monica do a five Oh five games and make you buy an ultimate edition of God of War. But I think Santa Monica are like the complete opposite of that kind of, uh, studio. I mean, Corey Barlog came out and said, you know, how he hates DLC and he would never have right. DLC, uh, DLC or microtransactions or anything. So I think that's sort of the same kind of, um, uh, sort of thought process so yeah hopefully we'll be able to play all those games on on ps5 without a hitch although uh remastered last of us had a remastered edition that i think mm. was what 30 bucks or something they did charge more yeah. for a yeah they an did upgraded actually, version yeah. Yeah. and did that come with i want to say that came with that um the dlc that had happened over the over mm. the summer over that year the uh gone not gone home it's um Oh, dang. I'm blanking on it. Uh, Left Behind. behind. I th- yeah. Yeah. I want to say it had that included. So at least there was some kind of um, um, deal involved where you had more yeah. content. But um, still, it's just, it's it's very weird to, to especially when you have, like in the article, they mentioned the other companies that are uh, having free upgrades. And you mm-hmm. want to try and give as much incentive as you can going in next gen because these consoles are going to be super expensive. Our consoles currently play things really well. So it's like, and you're dealing with a pandemic too, people out of work. So you kind of want to, try and give people more incentive to upgrade to these next-gen machines and by offering those free upgrades, that's the way you do it. But to yep. now require them to buy the game again just to take advantage of that, it's just not consumer-friendly at all. No, and, and they're underselling their own game as well because it's like, oh, oh, you don't have to buy the Ultimate Edition. You can play normal control on PS5, but it just won't be the upgraded version. And it's right. like, and, and I'm sure so control... Why did I buy this machine? 
I'm sure Control already rubbed people the wrong way because of how it performed on PS4 anyway. Um, That's true. So, it had issues. And I think they patched it eventually, but it had yeah. issues out the gate. So, you know, the least they could do is say you'll be able to play Control. You know, if you've got Control on PS4, you'll be able to play it on PS5, you know, with all the ray tracing and the performance uh, increase and, and all of that. But, yeah, it's, it, I, I just hate their statement as well because it's so... Um, what's the word? They're, they're literally just saying what what we already know. Like they're literally just saying, "Oh yeah, no, we can't do that because we're only doing it for the ultimate edition." It's like, yeah, we know that's the problem. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, it's a legal then, speak or like a PR yeah. kind of spin. Yeah, and and how they say like we understand how this might upset a number of players. It's like, well, don't do it then. Like, it's just um, right. Yeah, I, I, upsetting I think all the players that currently have this game. I think this is going to bode really poorly for 505 games to be honest because i i don't from what i've heard i don't think control did particularly well commercially um so i don't think they have room to um mess around with people like this because you know as you know i've always thought, thought about playing control but this has genuinely put me off playing it um just because it's just so stupid like, i just i'll be playing it and i just wouldn't be able i just wouldn't be able to <laughs> not think about it um right. it's really irritating but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it is what it is. And they're obviously not going to do the right thing and backtrack and and uh, sort it out. But that's, no. that's what they want to do. So, No, unless there was, a, I guess, a big enough backlash. But you're dealing with a fan base that's already so small that yeah. they don't have enough, you know, <laughs> enough uh, uh, presence online to actually create a, a huge um, um, issue. But, because, yeah. but yeah, you're just kind of really punishing that original fan base that supported you and it's a weird game and it's hard to sell and you're just hurting that those people that are there from you day one and it's just a, it's a bummer but i do get the sense that this is 505 making the decision as the publisher and maybe it's because hey control didn't sell well if we can try and get people to pay another 60 bucks going in next gen and not give them some kind of free upgrade we got to make some money there and that's yeah. just this corporate machine moving mm -hmm. and and the irony though is that remedy is left with no control over what's going on yeah and the game is called control and yeah. they're just kind of stuck going well we made this deal we have to we can't do yeah. anything about it yeah yeah it's a shame um yeah cause actually yeah you're right i i, I didn't even put that together because i'm too stupid um <laughs> yeah, there's five or five of the ones that publish it right yeah um yeah, it's, yeah, they made a deal a while back for a crazy amount of money. Yeah, um, it's a shame as well because I mean there were talks about Remedy being bought by Xbox a while ago, and then there were talks about Remedy being bought by PlayStation more recently. Um, so it's a shame. I think they would have been treated much better. But I mean, we've just seen what's happened with Insomniacs, you know, Ghost of Tsushima, and I'm sure that that will get a free upgrade, and all these games will. But um, so yeah, so it's a shame that you know they've gone with someone like Five Hundred Five that are so uh money orientated not not to say that they shouldn't i mean i know that money is the thing that allows them to make these games but um they've got to think about you know what, what they're doing and and i doubt that's really gonna make if if control really was a commercial you know dud i really don't think this is gonna is gonna change that i don't think right i mean why are people suddenly gonna buy it now just because you're doing something really horrible that are gonna upset everyone uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me but um, but maybe it does make sense, and that's why I'm not a CEO of a company or anything. <laughs> <laughs> you have a heart, Calm. That's why it doesn't make sense. You know, <laughs> yeah. These people don't. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, like, at the very least, what about a five dollar, ten dollar fee to unlock? Yeah. You know, the features that still uh, leaves a bad taste in people's mouth. But at least that's some kind of path. But to yeah. make them pay another, you know, full blown, full blown price, retail yeah. price for this game is just it's annoying. And I, I, I don't know why, why like they. This? They could like they've gone ultimate edition with all the DLC, rather than going base game upgrade, then the DLC, and then the ultimate edition. Like that should have been the last thing that they got ready for upgrade. Um, I don't know why they didn't start with the base game. Um, right. Yeah, it's just all very it's very strange, very very strange. And and if you think about it, by doing this, people are not going to want to buy it again on PS5 out of probably out of spite or just to make a point. Whereas if they were like, oh yeah, it's going to upgrade for free, but and and then it ended up playing really well on PS5, that would probably attract more people to buy it. People like me who still haven't played it, 
that would attract yeah. me more so to buy it on PS5 if it was like, oh, have you seen Control on PS5? It's got really good ray tracing. And there'd be no like negativity around it to stop anyone from buying it. So I think this is actually going to hinder them more than anything else. Although sometimes I wonder, because we follow the industry and we're nerds, I wonder if everyday people just don't give a shit. Like you, yeah. if you remember The Last of Us 2 had a lot of backlash with story stuff they decided to do, but that mm-hmm. didn't reflect their sales at all. It was actually yeah. a crazy, well-selling game. Yeah. So uh, at a certain point, it's like people see this on the shelf if there's even shelves to go look at anymore. Yeah. And they just go, oh, I'm just going to buy this thing. Or they're perusing the PlayStation uh, network and they go, oh, I'm just going to buy this. And yeah. they're kind of out of the loop. And maybe I, uh, I, I, I would rather be in their shoes where I'm not following everything so closely yeah, and I can just blindly yeah. make a purchase and have yeah. all these emotions tied pretend, to it. Pretend the games industry isn't absolutely awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if only we could do that, Kellen. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll, uh, we'll transition to some uh, happier or more interesting news. We got the just a little bit tidbits about the DualSense. Uh, PlayStation 5 uh, has released... Actually, they also are starting this uh, promo now where they're releasing uh, TV trailers for the PlayStation 5, which is pretty neat. So the promo yeah. cycle is starting. Um, that was that link there. But um, So this was a tweet taken from this whole this whole interview that talks about from the PlayStation blog about these new features in the DualSense. So developers share how adaptive triggers and haptic feedback provide new game experiences on PS5. So the actual tweet is pulled from, from Nibel, who's this uh, industry uh, insider, always releasing news. So uh, the overview is some devs have con- commented on DualSense's haptic feedback feature. In Spider-Man Miles Morales, you'll be able to feel where attacks are coming from with the haptic feedback. In Deathloop, if your weapon jams, your triggers will be blocked. So there's actual tension and they'll just stop the triggers actually from from firing. And this was after the fact, but um, with uh, Gran Turismo, well, I want to say five coming out, six, they're going to have uh, ABS locking breaking. So the triggers will actually affect how your how you're breaking and you can kind of, there's a limit to how you can push them and Mm -hmm. they'll try and replicate like the feeling of breaking a bit more realistically, but just some more info on how this still sense triggers or controller is going to work. Yeah. Yeah. I think it sounds cool. Um, it may, it's, it's, it sounds a bit weird though. Cause I think if the triggers can be blocked by something, then I'm just worried that they're going to accidentally get blocked. Like there's something will malfunction and then I can't push my trigger. Yep. I think that's a possibility. Um, and also, I hate games where your weapon can jam. I hate that. <laughs> um, it's like you're having a Far Cry 2. Like, you'd be shooting right. and your weapon jams. And it's just, it's so annoying. It's like um, it's like when you play a game and it, it just adds in things for realism's sake, even though that thing is just, there's no way it's ever fun. Like, there is nothing fun about a weapon jamming, like, ever. Like, that is never, ever fun. <laughs> Um, so it's kind of bittersweet for me because I think it's cool that the triggers will be blocked if your weapon jams, but I also don't right. think it's cool that your weapon can jam. Um, but no, it's it's nice to know that there's that the haptic feedback is this deep and it's that you know there's a lot of um, potential there to to do some really cool stuff. I'm really excited to try it because um, I haven't really used like the Xbox Elite controllers or the because uh, I know the Xbox One controllers have got pretty good haptic feedback. I know that they're quite good for like Forza and all that, but um yeah. this seems to be like maybe a step above it might be on par with the elite controllers again i don't know i've never really used them but um uh, at least it doesn't have those stupid paddles on the bottom so you won't accidentally press buttons all the time <laughs> um but yeah, no, I, i'm so excited to try it out i'm just excited just to hold it in my hands and smell it and taste it and everything <laughs> yep same i'm with you on that um <laughs> yeah no especially with the uh, gran turismo where they explained how the braking changes how you're when you're at, like mm-hmm. you feel tension in the brakes like yeah. if you're cutting a cutting a hard turn i yeah. really like that idea because that was always with driving games at least the, the the simulation ones there's a little bit disconnect of like how fast am i going but if i can feel yeah. the tension in the brake that kind of helps me just kind of dial in and makes it more immersive and so that yeah. seems really cool to me but i love that these devs are actually and i don't know if they keep this going and is this just like a touchpad kind of thing with the ps4 but uh, I do want to see them really try and tailor, if it works, tailor these new features with their game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, I want to see it supported for more than just the launch library because that's normally what happens is the launch library has yeah. all these new features. And then, I mean, hopefully it'll be, I think I think the, because uh, my mind sort of harpers back to the when, when the touchpad first came for the PS4 and you sort of saw it. Uh, at first but i think to be fair like exclusive games did always use it in some way um so um, so hopefully 
PS5 exclusives will always sort of, you know, take advantage of this. And I think that'll probably, you know, with Sony breathing down the necks of all their studios who are making these games and, you know, overseeing a lot of the sort of major decisions, uh, hopefully that's something that they'll push, you know, as a as the owner of these studios is pushing to make sure the dual sense is getting everything sort of squeezed out of it. Um, so, yeah, it'll be really cool. I think it'll definitely change the way games feel and... Um, yeah, I'm excited for it. I hope that uh, I'll be interested to see how they work with PCs as well. Um, it's, it's taken only until recently yeah. for DualShock 4s to be like, really native with PC. So I'm hoping that they'll make sure that the drivers are compatible straight away and maybe haptic feedback can be sort of assigned to games that support it on PC. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that, that works as well. That's a good uh, point to bring up because I didn't realize that uh, you're right with PS4 controllers. Um, I think I have to have mine always plugged in. And mm -hmm. if not, you have to buy some kind of Bluetooth dongle thing with the PS4. Yeah. I could yeah. be wrong, but um, especially with now that we have two huge games that are PlayStation exclusives now on PC, you think that they should kind of play nice a little bit with PC with letting that dual sense, mm -hmm. uh, you know, go over and yeah. actually work the way it should and be wireless yeah. and have some of the features like you think they would lean into that, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, they're. Mu I mean, they're much better now with the PS4 controllers. I mean, I, I've got, my keyboard's got like a USB slot in it, so I'm able to just plug Ooh, fancy. a cable into my keyboard and then into controllers. So it's, I, I don't really need to even have it wireless or anything. Um, and yeah, it works really well now. It used to be you'd have to download like third-party software that would like make yeah, your PC think it's an Xbox controller. But now, especially with Steam, where, where they've got their big picture mode and everything, and um, now Steam Link's like a bigger thing as well. Um, yeah, it seems to be that DualShock 4s uh, work straight out straight away now. And um, yeah, you're right, connecting them via Bluetooth's easy, but um, not all PCs have Bluetooth, so sometimes you need to get a dongle for, for them to to have that. Um, but um, but yeah, so yeah, hopefully that that will be more at the forefront of their mind because, like you said, they've got recent games coming out on PC, so hopefully it's something that they've already thought about. Yeah, we'll see. Um, hoping that they're a bit more conscious, you know, this this next uh, go with uh, PS5. Yeah. But uh, we will uh, we will see. We have some. Uh, these last two ones are really just rumors, and I think that's why I kind of have the bare bones information. But before I transition to the next one, so there is a little bit of scuttlebutt online of a Demon Souls, the remake that's on PS5. It got rated uh, recently uh, in Korea and Japan, and so it, the the rumors now that it's going to be a PS5 launch game. But uh, this is uh, Gamatsu has the original article, which I didn't copy and paste. But that's basically what's going on. And there isn't a whole lot to grab onto. It's just been um, been uh, rated, you know, in Japan and Korea. And yeah. usually when they're rated, there's an imminent release. Um, are you excited for that Demon Souls? Are yeah, you... I am in a weird way. I I have a weird relationship with Dark Souls. I've, I've only ever played the first Dark Souls. And I, I liked it when I had it, but... It's one of those games where I think back on it, I don't think I do like it very much just because of how rigid it is. It's very stiff. Um, and apparently Dark Souls 2 and 3 are much better in that respect. But well, again, I've never played them. But I love Bloodborne. I love Sekiro. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to see this. I never played Demon Souls when it first came out. Um, and I think it's just like when there's a new console, you just want to play everything that comes out on it, don't you? So um, yeah, I, for some reason, it really has grabbed me. And the trailer looked beautiful as well i mean because i i knew that there was going to be a demon souls remake but when that trailer came on and i was like what is this because it just looked so nice it looked far better than i thought the remake would have looked so um yeah exciting stuff um yeah hopefully it'll hopefully it'll be that'd be a really good launch game as well i think i that'd mean for awesome. me I, I know i know that this isn't this sh and this shouldn't be the most popular opinion but for me you know like three big games like demon souls miles morales uh, Ratchet and Clank and maybe a Battlefield. I mean, that's perfect for me. That's four very different games and Gran Turismo 7. That's five very, very different games, covers all the genres. I think that's perfect. And obviously we'll have all the smaller games that come out on launch. You know, I remember on PS4, you had like Resogun and that Contrast yep. game. Um, yeah, I, th I, I think the launch library sounding good. And if this is true, that this is going to be a launch game, I think, yeah, I, I think it's sounding fine. I think people forget how quickly games come out you know, after that launch window, you know, month, right. two months. Um, so you just need a few games to tide you over. Um, and, and you know, me and you, we're, we're both used to having big, horrible backlogs. So I think for people like us, we like having manageable, 
libraries of games to play through. I think there's far too many games coming out on PS4 uh, all the time, and um, oh, yeah. uh, and I just like the idea of having a few games to get through because um, it's just much much nicer but saying that i don't think that that can ever happen because of my backlog now <laughs> like there could be one game <laughs> released for ps5 for the first year and i'd still have too many games to play um so right. yeah <laughs> yeah that's also you mentioned the <clears throat> excuse me the launch lineup i mean traditionally if you look pa- past the the recent um launches of, of different consoles the launch lineup isn't always that super strong like you have no. one or two ones to get you in there but a lot of it's third-party stuff or you have you know madden you have your call of duty but that's really what kind of fills in the the lineup for a launch and so already with yeah. sony having possibly these three uh really strong stuff out of the gate i mean that's that's yeah. awesome and that's not a lot of what you see and we have now halo out of the mix with xbox series x i don't know what they have if they have at least one more strong one then maybe they can lean into that but I don't know what they have that's exclusive to bring you there mm-hmm. um, first. Um, yeah. So well, if you can have three, I mean, that's awesome. I'm just looking at um, the PlayStation 4 launch lineup, and you've got, I mean, I might as well, there's not actually that many, so I might as well go through them all, but you've got like Angry yeah. Birds Star Wars, which isn't even really worth mentioning, I suppose. <laughs> well, hope we'll stop um, there, because I mean, <laughs> that's pretty big. Um, you've got Assassin's Creed 4, which, I mean, will that's the same as Valhalla. Valhalla will be a launch game. Uh, Battlefield 4, which... Uh, actually, surprisingly, might be the same game that's, that's going to be out for uh, PS5. Right. So there'll probably be a Battlefield game. Call of Duty Ghosts, there'll be the new Call of Duty. That'll be a launch game. Uh, that Contrast game I was just saying about. Um, dive Kick, whatever that is. Uh, FIFA, FIFA will be another. FIFA will be a launch game. Um, Injustice. Um, I think that was like a. That's a. I think that was a, like a remake version as well. Um, Killzone yeah. Shadowfall, Knack. Uh, a Lego game, Madden NBA, Need for Speed. You know, the, all these games are, you know, I'd actually probably argue that PS5 has a much better launch lineup than that. I mean, if you look at like the real PS4 exclusives that came out then, all you've got is Killzone Shadowfall and Neck. And like, out of those two, I think Killzone Shadowfall is the only, so Killzone Shadowfall is the only decent new PS4 game in that, in that right. lineup. And if you think about PS5, we've got Ratchet and Clank, Miles Morales, um, maybe Demon Souls, plus all these other um, third-party games. Plus, it will actually be backwards compatible, which the PS4 wasn't, so you'll be able to play some of your PS4 games anyway. You'll have games not like Control, but games that you'll be able to upgrade for free. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't really agree with the conversation about the launch lineup not being good because you just got to look at the other launch lineups and... Yeah. I, th- I think that I think this is already stronger than the PS4's launch lineup by a million miles. Um, so so yeah, so I don't think we've got a lot to worry about really. No, and it's always the case. Yeah, the first year, really, the once you're into the second year, that's when stuff gets interesting. You yeah. get these really good exclusives yeah. and uh, interesting games coming out. I, I think even like Infamous Second Son that was pushed into that next year after that, so that was a bit yeah. further down. Yeah. Uh, and that's like maybe the next big exclusive I can think of that was a PS4 exclusive uh, around that time um yeah. and then also this is a third party or a multi-platform game but there was uh that zombie game i'm blanking on the name but you could run around and collect items it was kind of like dead island but it was not that uh and there was traversing it was like parkour and stuff oh dying was... light dying light yeah i know yeah. that was in kind of a lull where it was maybe february ish and mm-hmm. it, it sold really well because there just wasn't anything else around at that time yeah. And they're so still supporting uh, that actually i saw there's a oh, new yeah. dlc coming out for that a br- brilliant game as well dying light um yep p- probably one of the most surprisingly brilliant games um i've ever played but um yeah it's, it's a weird i mean dying light's a weird one because i loved it but i just never played it again after i completed it i just never went back to it or played any of the dlc but um because yeah. that's another one the sequel i mean whenever that comes out that that sounds really exciting they've got a lot of uh, they brought on a huge amount of um, like RPG writing talent. I think they took a lot of people from Bioware and Obsidian. I think I think one of Obsidian's lead writers is now working there, um, yeah. which um, makes sense with the approach they've got with all the different choices you can make. And um, so yeah, so yeah, just just quick. Just I know I went on tangent then, but yeah, just reminded me. I I always forget about Dying Light, and then every time it's mentioned, I'm like, oh yeah, Dying Light, that was brilliant. <laughs> 
Yeah, that was really the first next gen game that I got to play on the PS4. I, I think uh, when the reviews came out for it, that's when I really tried hard to uh, push for getting the PS4. And I think I had sold my PS3 to kind of exchange it for the PS4. I yeah. remember that uh, there's some yeah. drama that happened then, but uh, uh, yeah. So that was the first one I got to try, and it was it was it, it was full blown next gen, and it was the graphics were awesome. So it was, and it hit this really awesome time where there just wasn't a lot um, released around that time, so yeah. it filled this gap really well. And I think that's also yeah. it helped the sales. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you're right. I think we didn't get. I think weirdly, Killzone Shadowfall was like. I mean, like Killzone always is. It was like way ahead of its time even then. Um, and I mean, and then you see Horizon and that sort of just as like uh, groundbreaking. So I think you normally right. get like one launch lineup game, which is like mind blowing. But then it takes, like you said, like a year or so to get the next one. Um, but it'll be interesting to see because I think the big emphasis with the PS5 is how much easier it is to develop these games and how much easier it is to make them look good and how much easier, especially yep. with Unreal Engine 5 now. Uh, coming out um, it should hopefully be easier for developers to make these things and understand this technology without having to like re hit the reset button on sort of what they sort of understand um, and I mean if you just look at Miles Morales and Ratchet and Clank they both look just unbelievable in terms of their like technical quality and um, and everything and even the games that you're going to be able to upgrade to PS5 on on launch day um, they already look amazing on PS4. I can't imagine what I mean. Games like Ghost of Tsushima and Last of Us Two are going to yep. look like on on that new that new console. So it's it's really really exciting. I, I can't wait, and um, hopefully we'll be finding out a price soon and be able to pre order them because I'm very scared of missing out. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's the next issue. Um, and I was thinking about that uh, this week as Call of Duty was teasing their their announcement. I'm thinking, okay, they have that deal with. Uh, Sony has that deal with Activision to kind of premiere their stuff there first, or at least get like content there first. Mm -hmm. When they are teasing this uh, this announcements the, this week for to show that new Call of Duty, I'm thinking, okay, are we maybe going to get a PS5 uh, total event that that's also included in? But yeah. it seems like they're just kind of doing their own announcements separate. So that was yeah. giving me hopes that because we're getting towards the end of August now, it's like yeah, I would say really hopefully close. this week. They do that that surprise drop where they say this week we're going to show you PS5 news and then they go for Thursday. Yeah. But it's got to be yeah. this week or next week because we're getting into September. I feel like we can't yeah. leave August without a date on both these consoles. Yeah. But well, I mean, what what's the, the sort of silver lining to that is because it is an exceptionally short um, period of time we're going to have bet before it comes out. But I think that's quite exciting because we're going to pre-order these things and then a couple of months we'll have them. Um, very which true. is going to be i don't know how that worked logistically i don't know whether that's going to like make production really difficult because you know they're going to have all these orders and then two months to get them all ready to be shipped out i mean i don't know how all that right. works i might i might be wrong there but um but yeah it'll be nice because i when i pre-ordered the ps4 i pre-ordered that like back in june and then it didn't come out till the november so i had to wait sort of like half a year pretty much whereas this is like what a couple of months maybe like two months yeah. at, at least months. and um and then we've got it so i suppose that that's quite a nice way because all of our impatient sort of nurses come from seeing the actual machine uh now we've seen it there's not long to go so we don't have long to be impatient really which is always a good thing yeah that's that's very true because we're used to yeah summertime or like beginning of summer you put your pre-order yeah. in and then you get it that fall so, yeah. yeah, at least that's the uh, silver lining, but uh, still, yeah, we'll yeah, just try, trying to, to find trying out. to find the good things. <laughs> right. So, yeah, we'll switch to this last one quickly. It's just more rumors. This is a Prince of Persia remake listing pops up on retailer website. This is Brianna Reeves of PlayStation Lifestyle.net. A Guatemalan retailer listed seems to suggest a Prince of Persia remake is incoming. Twitter user Ken Zyro spotted the listing, then shared his findings on Twitter. Naturally, the post found its way to Reset Area. According to the listing, the remake will launch on PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch in November 2020. Apart from the Guatemalan store listings, there's nothing else to suggest the remake is real. As of writing, Ubisoft hasn't so much as teased that Prince of Persia will return in any significant capacity. Besides the recently announced VR game Prince of Persia The Dagger of Time, who knows, maybe Ubisoft truly does have a big surprise up its sleeve. If so, it's possible such news will emerge during September September's Ubisoft Forward event. That's their next uh, their next little uh, stream showing off stuff. Are you a Prince of Persia fan? How do you feel about this? Um, yeah, I, li I liked the PS2 games, The maybe the first couple. I, I don't really, I can't remember them that well. I remember them being, they sort of came out around those um, Legacy of Kane 
Devil May Cry yep. sort of time, and I feel like those games all had a very similar kind of feel to them. Um, but yeah, no, I, it'd be cool to get the sort of uh, PS2 ones back because I think, again, they're from a period of time where those kind of games are just so much fun and we don't get many games like that anymore. Um, so yeah, that'd be cool. Um, I, I like the sort of aesthetic of them. Um, and I really liked the film as well. I don't know if you saw the film. Um, but I never like, watched it. Like, I just remember it got bad reviews, but it was it yeah, good? Yeah, it's just, it's just like a really like easy action film, like action adventure film. Yeah, I, re- I really liked it. Yeah, it was um, g- good fun. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I'll be I'll be happy with a, a so what is this like a remake? Is it or um, that's the rumor? Is that a, it's a yeah. full blown remake, not a remaster? So because I know that because they had that like shell, that sort of cell shaded cartoony one that came out. They did. Was um, it like 2010, 2009, yeah. something like that? And I there remember like you reboot. couldn't you couldn't die in it or something. Like if you fell, you would like you were like saved, which I thought yeah, was you just really like odd. teleported back. Yeah, it was strange. Um, yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'd definitely be up for a, a Prince of Persia remake. I think that's another IP that could do with, uh, you know, having a spot in the in the market at the moment. Yeah, and they'll make sure and throw some microtransactions in there too, and it'll be fine. Yeah, and and to be honest, <laughs> Ubisoft, apart from all the stuff that's been happening behind the scenes with them and all the crap they've been saying, uh, um, I think from a making games perspective. Because they like delayed all their games, didn't they? Because they sort of realised that um, all of their games were actually really shit. Um, <laughs> so uh, they they delayed them all, and so the, the, you know this could be a cool thing, a nice resurgence for them. Um, you know, Assassin's Creed obviously looks great. Um, Watch Dogs Legions looks like a lot of fun. So yeah, this could be another solid title for 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 them to add to their sort of list. Yeah, I agree. We'll see. Uh, I, I am interested to see what they would reboot this franchise to look like and maybe lean mm-hmm. into that original one a bit more but yeah, yeah i mean it's uh if this is real that's really cool yeah um and that's really it for us this week Callum. uh where it got any thing of note coming up or any stuff happening this week probably but um i don't not in my brain right now but <laughs> yeah well where can uh, they find yeah. you online? um twitter at bear munro is normally where i lurk the most but um yeah, I don't. Know. I was literally just thinking. Then I was like, I was trying to think like, what, what should I play? Play now? I think I might. I think I might get back into Dead Cells because that seemed like a bit of fun. So uh, nice. Give that a download or something. But but yeah. Nice. So, well, yeah, we'll end it there. You can also find us on Twitter as well uh, at Plastic Heart Pod. And yeah, that's it for us this week, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. See you later. <laughs> You're too late. I've already summoned meteors. Okay, let's go.